Okay, so we'll go on and get started for the minute he gets here, we can catch him up. Okay, so uh, I'll go ahead and call to order this work session of the Nelson County School Board, Tuesday, May 8th at approximately 5.03 p.m. Um, as far as the agenda, are there any changes to the agenda as what we saw that was sent to us that you know of? No? Okay. Um, so we'll go on then into uh, item number three, and you'll need to tell me when that. Yeah, do, we wanna, right now. do we want to do a change to the agenda right now then and do that then? Okay. Okay. Wes? So, um, as you guys know, the past year we've been fortunate enough to have um, an interim superintendent that has work diligently with schools and students to really transition in a unique time for our school district. And the board has uh, asked that we create a, create a space to continue to honor Tom. And we're gonna be honoring Tom tonight with a watch with a special inscription on it. And uh, I think as I look back over my story, I remember when I was in fifth grade, I used to go from St. Joe to OK to transition on the bus. And there was always a man standing on the steps that I didn't really want to mess with too much. <laughs> and it's amazing how about 25 years later, that person comes back into your life and is still a man standing on the steps and you really don't want to mess with. <laughs> it's just a different set of steps at a different point in your life. So Tom has been very generous to our team this year, very generous to the students and the teachers throughout Nelson County, and this is very well, well deserved. So thank you, Tom. Thank so, you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you all. I, I appreciate. It. I didn't expect this, uh, but I do appreciate the thing. I appreciate the opportunity. You know, it's it is unique to be able to come home and finish your career and and stuff and you spend 20 years someplace and it is uh, it is uh, different and i and i do uh, appreciate that i enjoy the board i've enjoyed uh, working with all of you i enjoyed the people at the central office especially and how much they've meant to me and i really like them and uh, and stuff i wish i could have done more always you never feel like you've done enough uh, in the school business but I, I thank you thank you for this opportunity uh, to be back and thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I assume now that you've got grand plans to relax a lot. Um, I, for for sure, for the next uh, several weeks or months or so, I'm going to take it pretty easy and stuff, uh, and do some traveling. I was sharing with. Diane and Rebecca, my daughter graduated from law school this last weekend. So, and she also got her appointment to the Air Force for the JAG, JAG program, which has been a big deal for her. And it's, so, it's been a good, uh, last weekend was a good weekend. So, thank you all. I know, I know we all appreciate everything that you've done, Tom. I mean, you know, coming in at a time to kind of help settle things and guide us through some, um, uh, some challenges. And uh, also, I've, I've heard several times from uh, Superintendent Brack and how much he's appreciated being able to reach out to you over this past couple weeks now mm -hmm. and um, get some insight from you. I, I've kind of looked at it as it's at handing of the baton. You've still been able to hold on to it until he had a good grip, and then you said, okay, now I'll start running. So. That's right. He gets the next board meeting on his own. He flies, uh, so, flies solo on that there you go. Yeah, while, while you're sitting on a beach somewhere. Right? Uh, I don't know if I'll be on the beach, but I yes. <laughs> but you won't he be has, sitting in here. Well, he, that's true. But he has asked me to do a few things, like uh, I'm going to sit in for him at Thomas Nelson mm -hmm. on the principal search, and I'm really glad to do that. I'm going to do the graduations and a few of the uh, fifth grade and eighth grade promotions and things like that. So I'm looking forward to that. So now you get to be fun. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's when, somebody calls, when somebody calls to complain, I transfer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Um, so we'll go on into item number three on the agenda, efficient resource management, and 3A, the nursing contracts, Mr. Leather. Right, Chair. 
Okay. We're all going to do this together. Okay. <laughs> introduce her. I want to introduce to attending out to you. This is Debbie Hopper with Cumberland Family Medical. Um, Debbie, Tom, and I, with uh, our nurse and two of our staff, we've been going to all the different schools today. As a reminder, at the beginning of the school year, uh, when we, the board had asked to add four nurses to the staff, we had also talked about adding a health support option. Uh, we were looking at Lincoln Trail District Health Department and Cumberland Family Medical. Uh, Lincoln Trail District Health Department no longer will be providing that service uh, for any school that they basically deemed it as a non-essential business. So Marion, LaRue, Harden, and us uh, will not get a contract with them for the upcoming year. Luckily, uh, Cumberland Family Medical was, was someone that we had also that we were working with. They've been very busy with Lincoln County. And uh, so uh, they were a little reluctant about how fast they could jump in and help us because they had to stabilize that. Uh, but we do have Cumberland here now. Um, so essentially, I've given you the history sort of where we were. Um, we have a contract that is from Cumberland Family Medical. We have had that reviewed by the law office. There is one small revision still left in there that Tim Hawkinsmith and we have talked about. There's a percentage uh, change that needs to be changed, uh, needs to be revised. Their contract writer was out today and could not get that done. Next week, this contract will be presented to you uh, with a request for you guys to approve. Uh, so. I uh, really asked Ms. Hopper, like she, she went through the schools with us, if there's any questions, if, if, if you'd like to sort of talk about Cumberland Family Medical. And I'll just, just very briefly, I'll just tell you a little bit about who we are and kind of what we do. Um, we are a federally qualified health center, which means we do receive a small portion of our funding from the federal government. We started back in 2007 um, with one standalone clinic in Columbia, Kentucky. Um, right now we have 29 standalone clinics. Um, I have 45 school-based sites as of right now. Um, starting next school year, we will have 85 school-based sites. So we are in Adair, Anderson, Casey, Clinton, Cumberland, LaRue, Lincoln, Russell, and Wayne. Um, we hope in August we're going to be starting with Greene County, um, Gary County, and you guys. And then the possibility of also starting in Hardin County in January. Um, so we uh, we <coughs> offer primary care in the school-based setting. So each one of the school nurses stations we certify as an OIG clinic, which means inside of that clinic we can do anything that can be done in a doctor's office other than X-rays. So we actually have a traveling nurse practitioner who can come in and see students and staff um, for acute care visits, well-child exams, sports physicals, immunizations all of course with parental consent so um, you know we're able to to offer that in in the school setting um, we'll also be working with the school nurses to provide standing orders for them to be able to provide um, over-the-counter medications or different triages things like that, that that the nurses should be able to provide um, I think it's going to be a great partnership. This is uh, year five for us in school health, and we started in, in Russell County. That's where I'm from, so you can't hold that against me. Uh, so we started in Russell County, and uh, the superintendent basically called our CEO and said, we're going to lose all of our school nurses. Is there anything you can do to help? So he came up with this model, and we've tried it, and we've been uh, up and down through different things, and we've learned a lot of things in these five years. So we, we feel like we have a good model. Um, I will tell you, first and foremost, as the kids, um, it's not about the money. For us, we are nonprofit. Um, anything that, if we do make a profit, we give that back to the district. So we, we relook at contracts yearly, and if we see that we have uh, made any money or there's been an increase in, in referrals from school nursing counters or from provider, we will pay more toward the contract next year. Um, ultimate goal is that we pay 100% of the cost of all school nurses. We don't feel like that it's the school district's responsibility to pay for school nurses. Um, we feel like that's the health care provider's responsibility. So that is our ultimate goal. We are there in some of our districts already um, that we've already been um, 
in contact with uh, for several years. So that's our ultimate goal. Um, I, there's some information in here for you guys. I don't want to take a lot of your time, but I just wanted to give you a, a basic of who we are and kind of where we're from. We don't have any clinics in this area. Our closest clinic would be LaRue County, and so we're not as well known um, in this area, um, but I'm sure you're, you're welcome to reach out to any other school districts if you have questions. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions for you. Before, you, might have. before you all ask questions I, I want to give you a couple little things we will have to revise or we want you to revise a school uh, policy and procedure on over-the-counter medication because we will now be under the direction of a doctor and and a doctor's order so it is legally they also will assume all liability for the for the for the, all the nurses and what they do and everything we lose all of that liability by doing this you also directed us, Robbie and I, and Tim, that as we looked into this, that to get to a point where we added nurses, we added services, but we weren't spending any more money than we were a year or two years ago. I believe with this contract, I'll let Tim has perused the contract and, and everything, I think we will be right at that this year, that we added four nurses, and she's also going to be working to add a a tenth nurse professional for or no, another uh, medical professional at no charge to us uh, to uh, to do this. And we'll be right at what we were spending before we added any of the nurses. And we hope that it, I hope that when we leave, I leave this program to you all and, and stuff. When you work through it, in three four years, it'll be free. It'll be it'll be free. Sure. And that's our ultimate goal. So we Come do on. provide that. I'm sorry. Go we uh, go ahead. They do. They have one. They have another option that Lincoln Trail did not have. Lincoln Trail only bills through Medicaid. They can bill through any type of insurance. Plus, they now are billing Medicaid. So it's a situation, and this is kind of the Medicaid's new to them. So it's uh, that's why they're, we're not at 100 percent today. They have to, they have to go through it too, but I think this is a great option for the district. I think it's sound financially, and I think long term it'll be a, where it'll be. You guys won't have to even be thinking about this. So, and I, I know we really bothered you all in the beginning. So you've got some questions. I can yeah yeah. So yes, sir. <laughs> uh, sure. let, let me ask a quick, just like a scenario kind sure. of question. So from, from what I'm hearing uh, Mr. Brown say, and from what I heard you say, for instance, if I've got a child that is a, a third grader, you know, pick whatever age level, that, and I've got a, um, a health insurance that's in today's time, I'll say it is the best health insurance you could get, okay? Um, let's say that there's uh, no co-pays, I don't have to pay anything, and I know that's fantasy land anymore. Um, if they were needing like uh, booster shots, vaccination shots, instead of trying to figure out when could I get them into the local pediatrician and taking them out of school, and it would be something where there could be a, an approval given to where they would be able to do that, whether under the, the supervision of the nurse or the nurse practitioner, whichever yeah. it might end up being. Yeah, absolutely. So the, with with us, because we are we are a federally, federally qualified health center, for our provider visits, we can we accept any insurance, whether it's a private insurance, Medicaid, Medicare, or if they have no insurance at all. Um, we also we have a sliding fee scale and a hardship policy for our patients who can't pay anything. Sure. And so we never let pay or mix get in the way of that. Now for school nurse encounters, we are just now starting to build school nurse encounters. That's what Lincoln Trail and, and other health departments have previously billed, has been school nurse encounters. Um, we just got approval um, through MCOs as of February to start billing school nurse encounters. So that's a new revenue for us that we've never had before. All we've ever been able to bill is when our nurse practitioner sees a student. What was that? Can you repeat that again? School nurse encounters? That's Medicaid. It's a visit. Right, right. Like if the students come in to see the school nurse, for a visit, 
Um, say they need, uh, they're coming in and they are, they fell on the playground and they're having to clean out their knee and they need to clean all that up. That would be a visit with the school nurse. Um, it's very, uh, health departments in general have traditionally been able to bill for a lot of things as far as school nurse visits. We can't bill for as many things as the health department could, but there is certain things we can bill for. Now, no, a parent will never receive a bill or a statement or anything like that for a school nurse encounter. Now, if they see our nurse practitioner, if they do have a copay or a deductible or something along that line, they will get a statement in the mail. The school district is never responsible for handling any money or for anything in the billing process. We have a billing team. Yeah, 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 yeah. we have a billing department that handles all of that. The reason why I was kind of given that, you know, imaginary hypothetical sure. scenario there is because, you know, a lot of times we find, that whether it's from a parent perspective, Okay, I've got to find a, a date on my calendar that's free. I know I need to get that visit, and, and it's sure. not a not a, a, a an illness visit, right. but just a well visit. Yes, that's absolutely, and that's what we focus a lot on wellness. Um, that's our biggest push, actually. Um, we've done about seven thousand well child exams this year. Well, so, um, so this is that benefit for the parent in those kind of scenarios, sure. but also at the same time, you know, the child is you know ill, sick isn't feeling well or whatever well you know the parent most parents you know they'll try everything they can if they need to get to that school but also an opportunity for that parent kind of like i you know i'm saying earlier suck it up buttercup um that <laughs> <That's> says <me. laughs> well let's 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 see how you feel after another 30 or 45 minutes right so it would be something like that to where it's, it is a convenience for the parents in a way but also it's keeping the children there in school where they where Absolutely. we need them to be so right. that they have the best opportunity to continue their sure. learning. Or determining quicker if they're sick. That's exactly emotional. right. You know, if they have exactly a sinus right. infection, we, we see lots of sinus infections. If they have a sinus infection, they're not contagious. They can stay at school, but they're still able to get that antibiotic that they need. Sure. Um, we call that into the pharmacy. Parents are always welcome to come to the visit at the school um, if, if they choose to, you know, and we can test for strep. Uh, flu, mono, UA, injections, all those different well, things we can do. But providing a service is trying to make sure that we've got opportunities for the students to be well, for them to be in the schools, mm -hmm. uh, uh, unless like you were just saying, if they really, if it's somewhere they need to leave, whether sure. it's x-ray needs sure. or whatever the case might be. But, uh, yeah. you know, it's almost like a urgent I, I don't want to use it is, it, it is. Yeah. It's, acute so care. it's acute like a, yeah, an acute yeah. care type of scenario right there in the mm -hmm. school. Yeah, and so we'll have a nurse practitioner available every day. That's 100% at our cost, so that's at no cost to you all. Um, right here it says with appropriate staff. What yeah, so they will have a nurse staff? with them. So the nurse practitioner will also travel with a nurse. So school nurses will just be responsible for school nurse duties. They won't be responsible for nursing for the nurse practitioner. So we'll have that staff. And then, you know, we'll be, I'll be on staff on here quite a bit. I'm, I'm kind of everywhere right now, but we have other staff that'll be here to help. We do lots of health education also, um, and that's all free. We, we do all those things for free. Um, we are all about the kids, honestly, in all that we do. And I think I also heard you a minute ago, correct me if I'm wrong, say, Staff access. Yes, uh, staff are able to see our nurse practitioner. Um, we've seen a, a huge increase in staff attendance staying higher um, because we, we can see staff also. Because that's the other thing is, you know, the former classroom teacher, so we're going to try and get these uh, things together. Oh, I might as well just go on to school. And it's going to be easier if I just go yes. on and do that. And then you have a, a teacher who is not feeling well, maybe doesn't really even need to be there if it's something contagious. Sure. Uh, so this is an opportunity to also provide a service yeah, to our right. staff. Right, seen right there, and yeah. uh, prescriptions are all sent immediately. If there right. needs to be a school excuse or anything like that, we take care of it at that time. Sure. You, you had some more questions. No, no, uh, no actually, they, you're really good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually good. <laughs> uh, the, yeah. the only other yeah. thing I was curious about, so um, in simple terms, of course, there's the nurse practitioner and the nurse mm -hmm. that I'll, I'll call as a uh, itinerant, they travel. Yes. Um, is there's going to be a school nurse school at each of the locations that we've got right now? Yes, all the school nurses will remain that okay. are there. Um, they will all remain employees of the district. Okay. And we will just be the medical director, which means we just provide the standing orders. We'll do gotcha. um, the training, things like that for them. But they're going to remain employees of the district. We do have the one location where there's a nurse splitting two schools. Okay. And is we, that a, a close campus environment? It is a close campus. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so it is a close campus. Um, is it ideal? No. 
Um, in all of our locations right now, we have a school nurse at every school. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's it's not ideal. Um, I, I don't know, you know, what we can do this first year. It could be something down the road. It could be though. something down the road, but I, it's definitely something that I want to look into on, on our end because sure. um, I truly believe that every school needs a nurse. And I have worked campuses where I've had to go back and forth, and you're not efficient. You're not efficient. She's got a bunch of diabetics at both of those schools too, um, which is very worrisome for me as as us being the medical director. That's something we need to look at. Just so you know. Hey, I got a question. We we are. We were at nine. We lost one nurse, so we need a nurse over in New Haven. So that would put us back to nine. Just let me know that okay. that position is there. And then what she's trying to look at is this Bloomfield Middle option. If they could fund something themselves, okay. that way we would have coverage across. But she's yeah. she has to talk to her. Yeah, we've got to look at financials. And, you know, on iron because year one we're going to lose money. It, it it's just it's going to happen. It's just going to happen. Um, but I, I I don't feel. As comfortable not having a nurse in every location, especially with diabetic students. Um, if there was no diabetics, I wouldn't worry as much. But with diabetic students, I would feel much more comfortable with their being familiar, uh, if I, possible. I mean, in my, and this is just my personal opinion on the board is we always like I, I always like to look for long-term relationships. Sure. So knowing that it's something that you want to look at in future years, us keeping in mind that well, this first year you're negative but you also looking at it long term that long term Absolutely. it's going to be what's what best for both parties we, you know yeah. we're not here for one year and then gone right and that's what mr hawkins and i've talked a lot about on the contract as far as the financials we like to start uh conservatively mm -hmm. so we're never going to go down on what we pay so we're never going to come back next year and say we're going down on our payment that's not ever going to happen okay. um we're always going to go up in our payment so we want to start conservatively so that we are able to continue to to go up in our payment on the no, school nurses. Barry. Yes, ma'am. Uh, two things. First, sure. let's say my child, I want to talk about diabetic child. Yes. Uh, you all will, uh, let's say they go into diabetic shock. Mm -hmm. You are capable, I mean, you'll have provision for it to help that child. Right. Do you, let's say uh, you have an ADHD mm -hmm. or ADD, mm -hmm. do you, can they still give you their meds to keep? like it's going on now so there won't, won't be any no change. no 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 change in that same way okay. that that's always been with the school nurses as long as a, a doctor has an order there um we do provide emergency medications such as the glucagon for a diabetic or um epipen <clears throat> for um, an allergic reaction um diastat for a seizure so we do provide those emergency medications and we do training on that with school staff and also with the nurses. But they're everyday meds you still want to maintain. Correct. And yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. yes, same thing okay. it's always been. That's why. Yes. Yeah. The only, only thing that they do, they offer an option with Narcan if, mm -hmm. if the board mm -hmm. chooses to want to participate. Mm -hmm. that, that's up to you all. We leave it up to, to each board individually. I will tell you, every one of our districts, we have it right now. Um, it was a hard topic for me, honestly. I went back and forth and I studied and I went to conferences and I talked to many doctors about about it um, before we decided to offer it to our districts. So it, it's a board decision. Um, that is completely up to you guys on that. Um, the main, other than Narcan, of course, Epi, I think most every district wants Epi provided. Um, Benadryl, most every district wants that. Um, the glucagon and the diastat. Are, are your traditional ones, but the Narcan is one that is up in question is, right now. Is, is that one that we need to uh, make the decision as we sign off on the You do not. No, no, no. That's, we, okay. we have that policy okay. and procedure in place in our standing orders. You can choose to use that policy and procedure if you want. We don't have to if you don't want to. That's completely up to you all. Okay. Nothing in our contract is has okay. anything to do with that. So we, I like to offer that. Yep. You know, it's up to you all. Well, I asked that because of what you said, you know, it's up to the board. I thought, okay, is that something we need to be thinking no. about for next no, year? No, 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 no. It's just, you know. It's a big decision, you know, for this Yeah, so definitely something to think about, and it's not anything you have to decide anytime soon. Um, you guys can just let me know what you decide on that, and we're good okay. either way. Do we have any other questions? Any other questions? One, one other option down the road, probably mm -hmm. second year one thing that they can provide also is a behavior specialist mm -hmm. and that also would be 
at your expense. It is, yeah. And that's something the first year is launching, and the second year they've looked at option up as well. Well, we want to do this right. We yes. don't want to, We don't want to overload. Right. And end up messing some, sure. some steps along the way. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so I love our behavior health program. I love our medical program, and I'm really passionate about behavior health. I have four adopted children, and so we we need behavior health services. And so I've seen what it's done for my kids. And so we we hire licensed professionals. So it's it's a back, a master's with an also licensure on top of that. So ours we hire a little bit differently than some places but that's something we can definitely talk about. Also our um, dental program that we do offer too. So that's that's a decision you all can make. It's at no cost to the district. Um, we have a 40 foot dental mobile unit that we bring on site and we see the kids for um, exams, cleaning, um, fluoride treatment, um, prophylaxis and x-rays if needed. So it's their yearly cleaning. If they need restorative, we don't do restorative at this time, but if they need restorative, we do refer them back to their, their dentist uh, for that so that's something that you all can decide also if you want us to provide like I said it's a no cost to, to you all so that is something that we do offer also um, I believe as Mr. Leathers and I have looked at this extensively over this year these are the they're giving us the finest medical school nurse facility and care that any place in the state of Kentucky can offer so I'm, I'm very high on their product. Uh, vision. That is something we're working on. We're not there yet. That's the only thing I cannot get a, a grasp on, but we are working on that because we get that request very often. I'm sure you do. Percentage yes, of uh, dental the districts that use the dental product program. Everybody, Percentage of what? I'm sorry. Uh, districts that, that you service now um, utilize a dental program. All except two. Uh, seven out of nine. So, and then going forward next year, I think all districts, all of our new districts. So, we'll be going into 13 districts. We'll have 85 sites. Um, We've been actually been doing dental longer than anything. We started dental back in 2009, so it's actually we've been doing it longer than we have medical. Any outstanding reasons why those two don't? They already had someone in place, and the the two people places that they had um, working with, they were able to do restorative work on the kids. So they were able to fill cavities and do extractions and things like that that we don't have the capability of doing. Right now we're working on it and we're getting very, very close to that point. But that's why they stayed with them and I encourage them to stay with them. We don't ever push our services on anybody. Um, it's If you want our services, that's wonderful. And if we can help your kids, that's wonderful. But it's not, I'm not trying to sell the program. Uh, I will tell you, these guys have been very persistent in, in reaching out to us and, and very great to work with. So I will tell you that. Um, but I, I'm not trying to sell anything to you. We just want to help if we can, and we know the need is here, um, and that's that's what we're all about. That's what we're all about. We appreciate that. That's awesome. Sure. You know, so. if, if nothing else is said, back over to you, Tom. I mean, if this you want to look at it this way, this would be your legacy for Nelson County. Schools. Well, I thank you very much. I, I, Mr. Leathers has done the vast majority of the lab work on this and, mm -hmm. and stuff. You all gave us the go ahead at the beginning year. You invested in the program. Mr. Uh, Hawkins Smith found the money to make it work, and uh, and I think this is going to get us back down, and then eventually I think we're going to look at being of a very, uh, almost no cost to the district with extremely high quality services. There's very few, few districts in the state that do what we do. Um, we have more sites than any other. Not, I'm not bragging on us. I'm just saying the statistics. We have more sites than, than anybody else does. So it's very new in Kentucky. Um, school health has been, uh, you know, other states has been going on a long time. But as far as being able to provide medical services in the school setting, it's new. So just that you guys are, I feel like we're still on the on the bottom end of what we're going to do. So getting you guys in on the bottom end is a great thing. We I really do believe. Yeah, Thank I really you. believe it Thank you. So nice this district's been great. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right, my, I have my information here, so any questions that come up, um, feel free to call or, or email me anytime, and I'll be glad to answer anything I can. Great. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, let's see, moving on to item 3B, tentative budget, Mr. Hawkinsmith, and it may look like it's the Mr. Hawkinsmith show for the next several items. So pull up a chair and get comfortable. I'm glad I'm talking fast. <laughs> <laughs> On the tentative budgets, I, 
I'll obviously have a document prepared for you all to review in advance, like we always do. I don't have a document for you tonight. I think every other item I have on the agenda, Carla has that information, the tentative budget. We got to this morning when I got in, we, I think it came out yesterday afternoon, I was out, but uh, we got some information on our state care, alloc or state care strand allocations. Well, I just got that today. Um, we have information that was just shared about nursing and the impact that'll have on the budget. And that's good news, obviously. We'll be reflecting that. Um, we have, uh, we've had recent conversation the last couple of days, uh, or the last few days for sure, about a potential fifth Frisky Center that we're applying for. Um, I've got a gentleman with us tonight that I'm gonna bring up when we get to insurance. I'm gonna, um, we're gonna, you know, we just got insurance totals. That's a big ticket item in your in your budget. So we're, we're gonna be gathering that information over the next couple of days. And by the time that, that Carlos sends that information out later this week, you'll have that document to go with the other documents that you already have. Um, it's, uh, it's like this every other year in May uh, when you have a legislative session. Things just, there's just no information out there until late. Uh, next year, uh, when we come to this, this this round of the budget, you know, we'll, we'll know, we'll get the information a little sooner because just the nature of that legislative process. So, uh, but we'll be working through that. Uh, I've been meeting with Mr. Bradley on a pretty regular basis on things that we're gonna be doing in the district over the next few months. You know, uh, I think later uh, this evening, you're gonna talk about Chromebooks, that's a piece in the budget. Uh, so there's a lot of pieces that are that are still moving and we'll have those pieces as best we can later this week for that document to be sent out to you. And I remind you in September we do the final version of the budget. We know who we're, you know, we will have anyone who's going to retire will have retired by then. We will know uh, actual enrollment at the start of school. So we'll have a much better picture in September for that working budget. Uh, than, uh, than we do today. So that's the state of the tentative budget. We're gonna be working on that over the next couple of days and have that document to you. Any questions on that? Appreciate that. Uh, then going on to 3C, the insurance selection. I'll have Mr. Conway, he's right over there. Come on up, sit down for a second, Patrick. Um, just real briefly, uh, you have, I'm gonna let Carla go to the so the tabulation, our recommendation, just real simply, is to keep what we have now. Okay, we had a pretty lengthy conversation, you all might recall, last year on insurance. Insurance is one of our biggest ticket items in the budget. Uh, sorry that that's sideways. Um, the, um, our total, uh, as you can see, that we're gonna be bringing in next Tuesday night for insurance in the district is $460,000. We don't have too many $460,000 line items, uh, you know, but it's, you know what your insurance costs in your in your home life, uh, car insurance, uh, homeowners insurance, etc. It's just it's just it's something we all have to have, and it is a big ticket item. Uh, you can see that uh, we currently have our uh, uh, package. I call it the package: property liability, fleet, etc. With uh, uh, Ohio Cal Liberty Mutual, um, and that's with uh, First Insurance Group here. When I came here in '98, we were with uh, Eugene Wilson Company and they were bought by first insurance group a few years ago our agent has been kathy clements since i got here in 98. kathy does a fantastic job servicing the account uh, you can see that the uh, total premium is up a little bit that's because valuations are up um, you know i will tell you while well, you see the note there in 2010 one of the options we have for insurance the state sends out to school districts uh, a schedule okay if you have a uh, if it's a high school, it might be $235 a square foot. If it's an elementary, it might be $220 or 217 I haven't looked at those for a long time. And the reason why is because they're inflated. Because it, they want to make sure they've covered it. It's like it's like a overbuilding or, a, um, you know, I know we've talked over the last few years about overdoing things when it comes to HVAC systems to make sure we can cover it. But you have to pay for that. Uh, what, uh, what we've been doing since 2010 is we use an appraisal. KD's regulations allow you to use an actual appraisal because every 150,000 square foot high school is not identical. Every 2,000 square foot house is not identical. Some might be 300,000, some might be 600,000. So we wanted to get a, a better, uh, better deal for the taxpayer. We had the appraisal done and we've saved an average of about $15,000 a year on our premiums 
since 2010, we lose nothing. We, we have full coverage, we have full replacement coverage. We just are saving based on the, the way those buildings are valued. Uh, it brings me to Mr. Conway and his uh, worker. He's, he represents uh, our, or, or is our agent for our workers' comp insur insurance with the Kimi and uh, our student accident insurance with uh, Bob McCloskey Insurance. And I will tell you, uh, you all, we may have had this conversation months ago. I know I talked to Mr. Brown about it, and uh, uh, there was an option for our district uh, to self-insure through the state of Kentucky, through the Department of Personnel. And uh, we explored that. We're obligated, I feel like you're obligated to try to, you know, to explore all those options. Uh, I worked with Patrick um, and got loss information, and I got a quote. And then I went back and shared with Tom the pricing there was not a big enough difference to justify in my view the, the board taking on the risk of going to full self-insurance if it had been fifty thousand dollars instead of what we were paying that's something you guys could decide the difference wasn't enough uh, i shared that with patrick two or three months ago well i guess a couple weeks ago um, i reached out to our insurance companies and, and requested these quotes for tonight's meeting a meeting on the 15th Last year, you can see we paid 120, just under 121 for workers' comp uh, for the ex exact coverage using the same payroll totals. Our premium for next year is going to be uh, 102, 136.19, a decrease of 15 and half percent, and that's because of the work uh, and the partnership we have with people like Patrick, Kathy, and these others. Uh, they worked with the carrier. Uh, we've been a good customer. We have our, our mod factor for familiar with the workers' comp. Our mod, I think, is 0.75, which is very good, um, and so our losses are, are uh, pretty minimal. And he worked on our behalf with Kimi, uh, pretty much knowing we were going to be recommending the, a renewal with those guys. We weren't going to go with self-insurance, at least not at this time. They still came back and saved the district uh, what $18,800. So I wanted him to be here tonight, uh, you know, to. Uh, I want to recognize him for helping us with that. It's $18,000 we can spend on other things in the district. And again, Patrick and Kathy and our student accident insurance he has as well. The premium is unchanged, as you can see. Uh, you know, it's a good partnership. Uh, and I think those partnerships with vendors uh, are important to success, uh, success in the district, success financially, and providing those resources for our, uh, our students. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's good news. Uh, Total premium, I really hadn't even noticed this, okay, until just now. It's uh, $380 higher. Uh, I don't know what percentage that is of $460,000, but it's not much. So I would just encourage you to compare that to your own personal insurance costs this year and see, I think we're doing okay. And I want to thank Patrick again for, uh, for his work. He's uh, great to deal with. Kathy's great to deal with. So any questions we have on insurance? It's nice to be able to call across now. Sure is. I like uh, dealing when I can. Uh, it's nice to deal with people that you might run into in Walmart. You know, it just to, is. To thank them right. Absolutely. Be, be right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know. So, uh, but uh, these guys, they've been very, uh, very good to work with for a long time now, and uh, really appreciate Patrick, Kathy, and uh, our partners. So. Real quick, just like to thank you all for your business. Uh, We'd like to take some of the credit for the reduction, which with our clout in the marketplace and our relationships, but also Nelson County's loss history on the workers' comp has been excellent. At the end of the day, that's what drives your cost. Good losses, lower cost, bad losses, higher cost. So, and Tim's great to work with as well. But appreciate your business, really do. We thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, going on to 3D bond depository. This is a formal, uh, just formality we go through. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, generally, we do this uh, for two years, and uh, we approved uh, obviously the switch to West Banco last year. And we're now earning interest, uh, and that's been a uh, there's a lot of work that went into that, but th that's that's a good thing. And uh, uh, I, I guess I messed up when I submitted the paperwork to the Department of Education. I only submitted it through. June 30th of 2018. So here we are again asking for you to approve it for one additional year. We'll come back again next year and ask for a two year approval. So um, you won't have to do this, but every other year, that's what you should should have had to do this time. That's my mistake. But we'll be bringing that to you next Tuesday night for that uh, approval so we can submit that to the Department of Education. Any questions on that one? How long do we go without our interest for 
right previously? Six, seven, eight years. Yeah. A long time. A long time. Um, you know, we went uh, back several years ago, we earned $600,000 in interest one year. Uh, and we went from $600,000 in interest virtually the next year to nothing. And it had been essentially nothing for all those years. Now, you know, we had some money invested uh, in some uh, CDs, et cetera, that were earning some interest, uh, but now we're earning interest on our, on our daily deposits above a certain threshold. So that's good. Uh, you know, there's a lot of work that went into it on part of the ladies in the finance office, but uh, it's uh, good returns for the school What business. is the return on that? Uh, it's about, uh, can I get that number back to you via email or the next? I, I'm sure I'm going to mess this up. We're going to we're going to generate about forty to fifty thousand dollars in interest that's, that's this year. That's generally what I'm yes. to know. about forty to fifty thousand dollars that we didn't get previously. So uh, you know, it's a teacher salary. You look at it that way. Uh, so that uh, it's been a positive thing. And again, West Banco is good to work with. We uh, we feel good with that relationship as well. Uh, item 3E, the uh, School Facilities Construction Commission offered assistance for technology. Mr. Jack, he's real familiar with this. Uh, this is the third offer of assistance for fiscal 2018, and the offer is in the amount of, got here somewhere, 20456 You all probably have this memorized by now. We get that offer. We have to match it dollar for dollar, all 40000 plus dollars go into a fund that we use to buy technology for our students primarily, staff as well. Uh, but uh, that's, uh, we in my 20 years here, uh, we've never not matched an offer 100%. Uh, we've always found the money to do that. Uh, and uh, we would recommend that we do that again this time. This will be the last offer for fiscal 18. In, in 26 years of kids, there's never been a district period that's ever not matched at all. Really? No. There's never been money left on the table. Good deal. Okay, uh, moving on into 3F, Federal and State Programs Financial Procedure Manual. This is the same document we talked about last month. Uh, we did uh, talk to our friends at KSBA who handle board policies and procedures. Ms. Barry had requested some changes. We made those changes and they're in the that, that really is the only change that we made. Um, we're going to be asking that you approve this on the night of the 15th as just a, uh, a uh, KSBA called it a plan. This is essentially what we've been doing for some time now. Our auditor requested that we have a document. And so we put this document together. We used a template from another district that, that they were happy with. Uh, we changed it to fit Nelson County, made, made modifications to make it fit Nelson County specifically. But we're going to be asking to approve that on the night of the 15th. It won't show up in the procedures or the, uh, but we have a salary book that you all approve. Very simple. Just a district document that you've approved that we'll share with the auditor that, uh, that will coincide with policy uh, or a company, I guess, policy 4.92. KSBA provided that policy to us. Personally, I prefer one sentence, which is what 4.92 is, <coughs> versus 34 pages. But they wanted a little more uh, uh, volume to the to the to the, uh, to the document. So we're asking you to approve that on the night of the 15th. It just makes more sense to have the superintendent involved. Sure. Yeah. Just in case something will. Well, they're ultimately that, responsible. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's sign off. Yeah. Thank. Uh, thank you for adding. Sure. Yeah. I appreciate it. Any other questions on that one? Okay, good deal. We'll go on to 3G, athletic training contract renewal. You, uh, some of you folks that have been around for a while, uh, have, uh, you're, you know we have a, a contract with court for our athletic trainers. And if you go to athletic events, you see these people. And you may know their names. Uh, and you may not, but you, you see them. They're at basketball games, and football games, tennis matches, things of that nature, and uh, Cody James is the, the person that's at Nelson County High School. Well, he's been there since 2009 as our athletic trainer. He's not our employee, he works for court, and this is at no cost to the school district. We have an agreement with court. They provide these uh, 30 hours a week. Uh, they provide them to our schools. Uh, Eric Burkhardt is the trainer at Thomas Nelson. Eric's been there for six years. 
Cody's been there for, I guess, nine. Eric's been there for six. They're part of the family. Just athletes, coaches, and them. Uh, we're asking that you approve this uh, tonight for an additional three years to continue that relationship, again, at no cost to the school district. That's one of those high demolition. I can't remember whether Cody wears a court shirt or Nelson County High School. I think he wears Nelson County shirts. I think he, he does, doesn't he? Yeah. I, I, think, I, I think the young man at the uh, yeah. venue yeah. over there someday. And uh, I think the same things at the uh, place at Thomas Nelson. Again, I'm over here because this is where my son's he, attended. But, uh, he was checking on a parent who was due to deliver any moment at a softball game the other night. It wasn't even a student. He was checking in on the parents. So, you know, those, those guys put in a lot of time. Yeah. The contract calls for 30 hours a week. In three years, we've not been billed for overtime. They don't bill us for time. It's in there, uh, but we don't get bit. Realistically, that's not going to happen. Uh, and again, it's, uh, it's a very positive relationship, I think, between school district and court. Um, and uh, I think it's been a win for both parties, and uh, we'll be recommending that to you next Tuesday night. And that'll be a three year? Be another three year contract, yes, sir. Mr. McKay has reviewed that contract. We tweaked it a time or two at his request, and, uh, and what you have there is the final document that uh, we'll be bringing to you Tuesday. Yeah, appreciate it, Mr. Paul. I hope Cody's going to be at the meeting. Sir? I hope Cody's going to be at the meeting. We'll see if we can get him there. Do you need an adjustment or something? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Uh, moving on to number four, uh, item four, college and career readiness, 4A, one-to-one -one technology implementation, implementation, Ms. Chanel. Your partner in crime is not here tonight. Oh, no, he's not here. That's okay. I think I've got it pretty much well covered. Hopefully, I'll be able to answer all your all's questions on the technical um, side of things. Um, so, um, what you have here is basically a one-to-one -one proposal uh, for this upcoming school year um, that will be rolled out into um, a four-year plan. Um, and so, I'm just going to go over the highlights. I don't want to read this for you because obviously you can read. Um, so, um, let's start. We're going to go through two parts. Um, the more logistical part and then we'll go into the leadership development part. Um, logistically, we're estimating about $300,000 $300, um, being spent on devices and pilots. Um, and those devices will be distributed to all third, sixth, and ninth graders um, across our district. Um, and then also we are going to have one pilot um, K kindergarten class and one pilot first grade class that are going to be receiving touchscreen Chromebooks. Um, and so it'll be e easier use. Um, so we're gonna pilot that just to kind of see how it goes at that grade level. And then we're also going to um, pilot with, um, with teachers as well. We're gonna do 10 elementary, 10 middle, and 10 high school teachers that are willing to um, step out a little bit in the future uh, with their classroom and get rid of their desktop, go to Chromebooks um, and Chrome bits for protect, uh, projection, and, um, and then Bluetooth speakers. Um, so that is um, what you're seeing um, there reflected on the budget side of things. Um, you can see um, that they're the 11 inch Chromebooks for the second through eighth grade um, will be purchased and 14 inch Chromebooks for the ninth through 12th um, grade will be purchased eventually. Um, so we will, how this will work is we will just roll every year. Um, so we'll buy every year third graders, every year sixth graders, every year ninth graders, and then they will carry them with them. Um, three to four years depending on what grade level that they receive them at. So um, that's more of the logistical part of this um, implementation plan um, and that's more of a Jesse, a Jesse part. Um, also the help desk, he wanted me to mention the help desk. How are we going to keep up with uh, the repairs or um, things like that? Um, right now successfully Thomas Nelson is um, has their own student um, help desk where Kids bring a Chromebook that has been broken and the STLP kids fix it and get it back out to them. 
Um, so you talk about student leadership right there. That's a great opportunity for those kiddos. So what we are going to be working on is creating that in the middle and high school um, levels. And then for the elementary, our library media specialists are going to be um, in charge of that, not in charge of the repairs, but just kind of being the hub for storing them and things like that until our tech department can get over and get them. We are also hire, um, going to be um, having two student workers that will be co-oping with us starting in the summer, um, half day, and we'll have all the way throughout the school year. So they will be able to help our tech department with, with that as well. Um, so that is kind of the technical side of it. My side of it, which I really like to talk about, um, is the instructional part um, and the leadership development part. I have started, um, based on reflections and observations and feedback, I, I feel like I've started some great things and going with some programs. Um, and moving forward, we're going to continue with those. But one additional thing that we're going to add is um, an Ignite Academy. And that is going to be for um, dependent, and it is up to uh, the school administration whether they want to send their whole team that's being one to one, given, given one to one. Or, um, or just one, um, one teacher out of that team um, that will have a one-to-one -one classroom and then also the library media specialist and the instructional coach or slash admin. So, um, but I have worked really hard on exposing our staff and our students to just tech tools in general. My focus this year is going to be more on the instructional strategies of how you take those tech tools and you implement them um, to empower students to lead their own learning. So, um, and that's across across levels. So that's the instructional instructional part um, in in a nutshell. Of course, I could talk about that for days. But um, so, do you guys have any questions for me? Any questions? Okay, the elephant in the room is the three hundred thousand dollars worth. How's that? Where do we get three hundred thousand dollars? Okay, so what we did is we actually took, and Tim, you're more than welcome to jump in if you want to. Um, we took uh, the current enrollment, um, and as of last week, all third grade, all um, sixth grade, and all ninth graders, and it was about 970 devices ish. Um, and then we've added on uh, the the pilot, the two pilot programs. So the pilot program for the K1 class. So that was 50 additional Chromebooks. And then also the um, pilot for the teachers, which is an additional um, 30 Chromebooks. And then um, one thing that we're looking into is um, a part of that is there's a software that um, that is called GoGuardian. And basically, um, based on our um, conversations with other districts that have rolled out one-to-one, -one, they um, suggest a software like this. We're still looking. Um, we're, you know, we're still seeing if there's somewhat, something cheaper. You know, we're, of course, we are very conscientious about uh, the budget. But basically, GoGuardian, what it does is if the device leaves, if the device leaves the county, or we get we get word that the kid has moved counties, we can automatically shut that device down where they can't log in at all. Um, it has been brought uh, to our attention that there have been um, some instances and situations in other counties where the parents will actually go to the pawn shop and try to pawn the device. A pawn shop's not going to take advice that says this device is disabled. Please return to Nelson County Schools. So um, that's one of the features of GoGuardian. So that's uh, that's about thirty-five thousand dollars worth of. Um, now that is not just for the thousand Chromebooks. It would be across school district all Chromebooks. Um, well, that's eventually. what I'm saying. Where where are we going to get the three hundred thousand in the budget? Are you asking We've, us for three hundred thousand dollars? Yeah. To are you asking us? us for that kind of money? Yeah. We have. Uh, it is my understanding that Tim has already brought to you all's attention that we would be doing this. Yeah, we, we, yeah. We've talked. We've okay. Talked about I'm like, and one to one. Yeah. You, um, <laughs> yeah but I, I think know yeah. Three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. 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 Okay. I'm like, I think so. So, 
Yeah, it, there, there's a couple of things. It, uh, long term, it will be more than that. Yeah. But, yeah. but Tim, I think in the draft budget that you brought, there was a line item that you kind of referred to that depending on how budgets were playing out that you would right. like to have that for this. And we've been building tentative budgets uh, knowing that uh, that's really the last chance you've got before the start of school. Uh, and, and there's so many items there, uh, additional costs and savings that if, if you, if I went back and looked at my Google sheet, uh, but, uh, but we have talked about that. I, I don't remember the exact, maybe it's been multiple meetings about Chromebooks. We may not have ever come up with a, no, we never the exact up. number. Yeah. But I will tell you, uh, in, in talking to Jesse and Jamie this morning, I think one thing to think about, it's, it's $300,000, but we're gonna spend less elsewhere over time by going to Chromebooks. And we don't know, um, we don't know uh, exactly what those numbers are, but for example, uh, if you've got two or three computer labs in, in every school in the county with 30 computers in each one of those, over time, every kid now has their own device they're walking around with. We spend a fortune updating computer labs in the district. We've got a lot of money in, in computing at the, in the time that we did that. That's, that, was a, that was a good uh, decision for the district. This is just the next, I guess, generation of technology in a school or in our school district um, and uh, you know, so we do have that 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 figure will be uh, reflected in that tentative budget document you get later this week, and I'm I'm very comfortable with that. I'm confident uh, that uh, we'll be able to, and that's that's why we have a plan that's where you're spending a consistent amount uh, over you know, over the life of the of the program. That's why we didn't come to you and say, you know, hey, we've been cobbling away money over here. We want to buy a Chromebook for every kid. That would have made a lot of people happy. But then in five years, four years, three, you got to buy them again. So what we're doing is you have, you're sitting aside an amount that you'll need to budget annually. And in what, four years? Four. Every kid in the district will at that point have a Chromebook. You're, you're talking about an operational budget line item. Right. In essence, it's right. something that we, just whether we're talking about diesel, I'll use diesel fuel as an example because right. that's one we always end up, uh, you always end up bringing up every year with the budget, is we budget every year for that cost, just like what we, and, and honestly, this is what every school district needs to be doing, is they need to be budgeting technology refresh as an operational cost because what we're finding across the state is that a school district that doesn't take that approach, all of a sudden, like, six years, seven years ago, I forget when it was, whenever we had to go to that in computing solution, we were rapidly finding that pushing 90% of our instructional devices in the district were six years or older. Uh, and at that age, they have aged out of really their value and what can be used. So do we end up spending the same or more money for replacement of those in computing labs, or do we take those same dollars and just reallocate them towards starting a one-to-one -one initiative to where after four years, you said, mm -hmm. uh, the same amount of money will have been spent, but it's every year an operational budget line item, and then every student grades three up, and potentially even in the lower grades, we have some piloting of devices as yes. well. Okay. I mean, is that, is that kind of what that's some of what you're talking about? It is, but I, you know, this is not something you got to find. You don't have to. It's not you don't have to go find this money. We have been working towards this for some time now to build this yeah, in. I have a hard time with it. Why I have a hard time with this is because, for instance, we didn't buy buses this last year. We, we either buy, do this or we lose kids. I know, but I'm just saying. In my mind, I'm just saying. I'm, that's my concern. I don't have any problem with the 300. If we hadn't have not, we didn't do what we normally did. We didn't take the buses. We didn't, you know, we cut out a bus route. We've done all we can, and then this comes up, and it's like, okay, it's like, wow, three hundred thousand, and we missed out buying buses, six buses. But, you know where I'm coming from? But we, we fully intend the budget. I was going to have six buses in it. You know, so there's we're not going to not buy buses again. We we had other things that happened this year that result. You know, that's, that's, but you know where I'm coming sure. from. No, I, that's I, what I'm think. thinking. What things we didn't do last year, as opposed to the good things that we want to do, but what we didn't do, that's what concerns me 
I want us to be uh, high tech too, and I want us to be the best in the state, but I'm just thinking about budget-wise, what we didn't get done last year and what we're doing differently this this time. That's, that's what I'm thinking. I'm sorry, but that's the way I'm looking at it. I, I'm thinking the kids need, we needed buses too, and we didn't get those last year. I'm just concerned about that part. I don't want to cheat anybody. I don't want to, um, you know, I don't want to put a damper on anybody's plan. I'm just looking at what we didn't get done last year, and we didn't do it. Well, did we suffer because we didn't have the buses? Uh, I'm sure we have old buses. Uh, I mean, they maintenance can tell you we got 17-year-old buses. Did they get to school back? I, I don't know. All of them I mean, didn't get to school But did we have any greater have, problems than anybody else? I'm saying if we suffer, know. if there was suffrage because of not having the buses, I could understand. But I don't think there is. I think the buses are planned for this year, and this was also been planned for for this year. It's one of those. That I mean, that was my understanding. Is um, maybe I misunderstood that, but I thought this was something that we had planned for. The bus was a one-time. The not getting buses yeah. was a one-time deal because we had some. Should we call natural events the, the and some HVAC buildings that had to have? Well, that's what I'm saying. We, we water, had to spend yeah. money. Right. Yeah, we had to spend the money. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. Mm. But if you put this in a priority uh, against a computer, and I know people see things differently, but a computers and a bus to get kids to and from school. That's that's what I'm, that's my thinking. You know, I'm just thinking and, about Right, and I'm on the other end because if they have a computer, they don't really have to come to school. They've got it at home. Oh, I want them to come to school. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, yeah, we still want to I want them to come to school. Yeah. But when yeah. it snows and everything else, I'm yeah. looking at it. Yeah, yeah. The, the technology will never replace a good teacher. No. In fact, one of the no, best we'll comments I heard, heard it was Dr. Something. Batten mm -hmm. uh, at UK yes. who said technology will never replace a teacher, but it will re replace a teacher that doesn't understand how to leverage technology. Um, let, let me ask you a couple questions on this here. So, um, and of course, I, I I look at this through a different set of lenses uh, because well, of my yeah you know, because of my pay the job that actually pays my bills, not the roughly what 15 cents a an hour we seem to get sometimes if we calculate out the amount of time we put in as board members. Um, looking across districts that have done similar types of things, I, I see what I would call little bits and pieces of Boyle County and little bits and pieces of uh, a Marion or a Woodford. So it looks to me like what has happened here is that between you and, and Jesse and whomever else, having talked and, and looked back and see what succeeded and what didn't succeed in other areas, not recreating the wheel, taking the best pieces of it, and as I'll call it, throwing it in the blender and hitting parade and then having this nice drink that we can drink from. Is that kind of where this, this has kind of been developed out of over sure. the last little bit? Sure, we um, put together a one-to-one -one committee, um, I would say about five months ago, um, and uh, we traveled to some different um, districts and got feedback from districts that are one-to-one, -one. and um, we did. We saw some great things that would work, that would work for a little bit here and a little bit there, um, and that's what we've kind of compiled this into. Uh, and so it was not a, just a me thing or a me and Jesse thing. We had um, input in from our from our library media specialists, our teachers, and our principals um, at all levels. Um, and then the directors um, were also in on on the committee. Uh, and so um, yes, that is what that is what you're seeing. Okay. The and, and this is something you may have heard me say this before, and, and if not, just ask Susan Taylor, the CEO of Bullock County. Okay. okay. Because uh, he got her in trouble one time. Uh -oh. um, you know, the, to me, the easiest thing that any school board can do is write the check. Yes, now, you know, as Ms. Barry was saying, that, you know, we, we've always got to be concerned about uh, expending funds, especially whenever we start seeing dollars like this. But sure. that's the easy part. But the hardest part is always making sure that um, from a uh, preparation of implementation, from a support model, during, uh, once you've got it on the ground, uh, and then also being able to support the teachers. And, and thinking back to something that you said whenever you got done talking about the boring stuff of logistics uh, <laughs> and started talking about your wheelhouse, the things that you're passionate about, it sounds like are, there are things that you've started to build in your first year here in the district that can help support the teachers so that they actually have a success 
with the instructional tools in their classroom. Yes, so absolutely, and that'll be what that'll be definitely some things that will be some things that I continue. Um, I go to almost every school monthly and do a rock and road rally where I just take three tech tools and just introduce them to it and it's just like based on what level they are they take it and they go back and implement it and it is the coolest thing to be able to walk down the hallways and look in a classroom and see them implementing the day that I just have showed it to them um, but without that technology there they, they they can't they can't implement these and they're looking at me like going like Jamie this is great I love the stuff that you're sharing but there's one Chrome cart for 100 kids. And I'm like, okay, I get it, I understand. Let's do with what we have. Make the best, make the best possible. Um, so yes, that, it, that there are already some things that are in place such as that. Um, another one is NCS Ignites, um, which what is a cohort of teachers that um, I put together this, or that actually willingly said, yes, I wanna know more, I wanna come, I wanna learn school hours I'll devote two hours a month for that and um, you'll be they'll be recognized at the meeting on the on the 15th um, and one of probably my proudest moments and I'm not saying this to brag but I had um, an ignite get up and do her culminating pro show her culminating project and she said you know what I've been teaching 30 plus years and until this year until you came in the district I thought I was fine I thought I was okay and then I realized that I wasn't <laughs> And so just just knowing that there is a difference and there are teachers that are out there willing, they know that, that this is coming, this is our this is our community, this is we need to prepare these kids um, for for what they're gonna face, um, period. And so um, well, but you made a comment about that the students own their learning. And there's probably some of us in this room that if we've ever had to change a headlight or a tail light on our car. What's the first thing that we typically do? YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and that's the same approach that students take nowadays as well. Yes. They, they own their learning to a degree. The, um, I didn't have Was there a question? Or? No. Okay. Um, and so, um, you know, that, that's the key in this too, is that I, I would think that we don't want students to, or teachers just to believe, well, we got the technology, so now let me just use it a little bit. I mean, it truly is, one of the things that I think we would have to expect out of this is that it changes the way we learn, and as staff, the way that we teach as well. Correct. The incubator for changing the way our educational environment and That's is. where the leadership development comes into yes. play. Yes, yes, that is exactly where it comes into play. Um, and so, yes, that and that'll be something um, the Ignite Academy will focus on. Um, you can see over here under instructional vision, these are all student-led learning um, ideas and strategies strategies, instructional strategies. Um, so, I mean, that that the kids need problem solving. They, they need that. They need to know that they're going to fail and they have to step up and overcome it. And um, I was just in a classroom today with passion projects and I there was a, a fourth grader that had her passion project on training her dog. Well, her presentation's coming up and she thought, well, I need to bring in my dog. I've never thought about this kind of thing and and so I said well email Miss Victory email but she was like email her I can email and I'm like sure why not I think that's great I think it's purposeful I think it's great so she emailed Miss Victory and she came back and she was just a flap in her arms I got an email I got an email and that made me so happy um, and so anyways but Miss Victory said you know because of because of reasons that we can't control that's out of our control you can't bring in a pet and she was like and I'm like no remember we face hurdles and we jump over them instead of just backing up and she was like well I did create videos of them I guess I could share the videos there you go and so yeah so so that's what I'm talking about with these um, and and creating these um, these future ready ready students um, well, that student center is student oh yeah um, and, and they care public so public. much more about things that are that they have ownership of. I mean, Absolutely. Some, some of the things that I've seen, whether it's at Nelson County High School or Thomas Nelson or some of our elementary schools that have been posting through social media mm -hmm. of their uses of technology for it to be authentic learning, 
Uh, one of the most recent ones I remember was uh, one of the high schools doing Google Hangouts with Cox mm -hmm. Cree. Yeah. And it French was students. French students yeah. talking with the students. And I mean, I just saw a picture of it on social media, but it was looked like it was elementary students crowded around the Chromebook having that Google Hangout video conferencing essentially yeah. with that high school student about learning the French. French. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah. Anyway. Absolutely. I've still got Tim, mm -hmm. help me out here. Uh, how did we come up with $300,000? Just sort of well, help uh, me. It's, there's, there's so many bits of detail, but I'll give you one couple. Yeah, think. give me, give me well, some help here. The, uh, for example, the, uh, the all the 11th hour activity in Frankfurt with our legislators, uh, you, you probably heard me remember me say many times about the CERS matching rate and how that was going to cost the district about $400,000 more next year than this year. Yes. We don't get a pencil, we don't get any of these little nice little books or anything. Right. We get nothing, but people do get a sound pension. It's pretty important. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the uh, one of those 11th hour changes is a phase in of that increase. So instead of 28% on our classified employees, we're going to pay 21.48. Yes. The difference between those two percentages alone will buy those Chromebooks. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I will also tell you uh, this is something we were tr going to try to figure it out. We figured it out before that. Uh, but there's a lot, there's so many things uh, that, that have happened just over the last few weeks. Uh, I know another thing we're going to be including, this, this is not what we're here to talk about, but I think this will be of interest to you, is you all, I know all of the board members uh, have expressed concern over the, when we reduce the amount of money we give schools for their supplies through uh, site-based allocation. Uh, Mr. Bradley started last Tuesday, I would say it was last Tuesday, he said we got to figure out a way to get that back to the full three and a half percent. Schools, it's not like they have excess cash lying around. Well, we're gonna be recommending that in that tentative budget that comes out uh, next Tuesday as well. So schools are gonna get an increase there and it's because of some of those changes. The seat base actually went up a little. A little, yeah. A little, we not much, but it, it's a little bit. So that's helping. There's a lot of things that uh, that are helping. We lost PD money. We're gonna have to make yes, that up. Is. But there's a lot coming in and a lot going out, and that's what I'm gonna be doing over the next couple of days to try to get that document to you guys for the board meeting next Tuesday. But I am very confident that we're in a position to be able to go to this one-to-one -one program. Very confident. I will tell you, I got a call last week. Principals are chomping at the bit to get these devices in the hands of kids. I've been trying to hold them off, honestly. <coughs> If you'll wait, I think the boards, we're going to approve a budget where we're going to help you with this. So that, that fundraiser can be for something else, not for Chromebooks. We want to provide them to the school. I do too. Um, I, so, just, I just want to know how we're doing. Yeah, but that, that, I mean, that's the, a logical question. Sure, oh, absolutely. Because so, I've that, got an answer to people, why do you, why are we able to do this and not that? that right. You know. But the CERS change, just that one thing. Uh, if you add to that the seek increase, it's minor, but it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, some money to us. Those two things easily pay for those Chromebooks, just in those two things. There's a lot of other ins and outs, but uh, just those well, two. Well, the other is probably small things, too. They are. But small things add up to large things. Right. But, uh, um, but very confident we're in a position to be able to do this. Okay. okay. I just want to make sure. What's the ratio now of Chromebooks to students by school, do we know? Okay, so we actually did a very thorough inventory of what um, of what the schools have, and it varies. And there are some schools that um, the ratio was like six, six to one, ten to one. Like, I can send that. I can definitely send that, that sheet where we... I'm just wondering what the worst of that. So one school is ten to one. Whereas another let me school look, is maybe three to one. Because I don't want to tell you something incorrect. Okay, so correct. let me look Thank and then I'll let you know. Absolutely. I'm just, I'm just wondering how, the, how it varies yeah. across the district and how the schools that are three to one, how they got to be three to one while another school is ten to one. Because where my, my issue comes in is the equality among schools that perhaps some schools have been technology advanced have made the effort in the community to provide their kids with Chromebooks at three to one, and another school perhaps hasn't, and they're at ten to one. 
yeah. is that really equitable yeah. for everyone to be in that process so I think that it would be more equitable or perhaps and easier to swallow for the school that's three to one because I think it happens to be the one that I represent that they would perhaps go first that they should be rewarded for their foresight of fundraising and trying to get their kids the ratio lower realizing that that maybe they would be considered higher in the pilot that's my thought process okay and i i um, respect that i um i will tell you when we when we completed the inventory chromebooks have um a lifespan of about five years okay at the outside. At the, yes yes and then it's not necessarily that they lose functionality that they lose battery life and there's nothing more frustrating for a student trust me you know coming from a one-to-one -one classroom that that you know you you're walking around with a dead chromebook you know so um so with them with the within those numbers we actually um we only allotted for chromebooks that our I want to say four years or less, which Jesse did the numbers. So, like I said, um, so if they have if they have older Chromebooks, we didn't take that. So when you see those numbers with those ratios, is what I'm telling you that when you yeah. see those numbers, you're gonna think, oh my, this school has. I know they have way more technology than what mm -hmm. we're seeing, but we actually took those Chromebooks out, the ones that are older and are certain. What do you do with them? We're actually going to be, we're still going to be using them. Um, so they will have the options, parents will have the options to either, um, in, in schools, will have the options to keep them as day users. So some parents won't want their kids to be able to take them home. Um, so there will be day users. Let's say a kid comes with a cracked screen. You hand, you hand them yours, they, they, you know, they take it, then they get one of the replacements um, until yours is ready. So it'll be, they'll, be, they'll still be used, utilized. Do you, is, uh, is some allowed to buy them if they're unusable, if what we consider unusable, but uh, I've had a computer it would, it would longer be, than four years in work. There'd be challenges with surplus laws. Oh, there would? Yeah, because it's public property and with surplus laws, you have to go through uh, open bid processes or a uh, sealed bid processes, I'm sorry. It's um, like when somebody yeah. buys school A school property. bus, yeah, mm -hmm. a school bus or desks or anything that has been deemed, like, well, like what we would do with Silva even. Yeah. Uh, that's steam surplus. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank, Thank you, guys. Mission. I'll Thank appreciate you. Absolutely. it. Uh, moving on to item number five, professional growth and effectiveness. Five A is certified certified evaluation plan updates. Miss Williams and Miss Newton. Use intro at Emory. I'm going to turn that over to our 50-50 chair, which that'll be Ms. Newton. Tag, you're in. There's a little context, a transition yeah. there, though, how she became the 50-50 chair. Can you talk a little bit about the, that journey? Uh, Mr. Morris, when uh, he sort of stepped down, he was the 50-50 chair as the HR director, and when he stepped down, he sort of designated uh, Courtney as that chair, and so she sort of finished this out for the year, and she's done a nice job with that, so I'm going to let her present the final product. Uh, so last year, a Senate bill was passed that gave us a lot more flexibility for what the CEP would look like for the districts. They left a lot up to the districts to decide how we wanted to use the evaluation system. So the 50-50 committee decided to invest that energy into the teacher evaluation framework primarily. Um, so there's a lot that's written in the CEP that you won't see that's changed as far as the verbiage of the CEP, but the tool and the, the vehicle for the evaluation is what we invest a lot of our energy in the changes. Uh, so the teacher evaluation framework process, we changed that as a committee to be a little bit more collaborative between the evaluator and the teacher. Uh, so the focus is not just on the ratings and the evidence, but it's on goals, it's on reflection, and it's on action steps that teachers going to take to make progress. Um, so one change that we did make was the reflection process used to be a long reflection process in the beginning of the school year. For those of you that saw that, it was about five slides long and it had to be done by the very beginning of the school year. We changed that to be an ongoing process, understanding that that's more impactful when you're speaking with your collaborator to say, this is what I want to work on, this is how I'm reflecting in an ongoing manner. So reflection shouldn't be a one-time and done thing, it should be ongoing throughout the whole year. 
so that's one change that we made. Um, in addition to that, after the evaluator is in the classroom, they leave the feedback on the uh, framework. That teacher will have five school days to then go and put their reflections. So we felt like a, a time frame was necessary for that as well. Um, besides that, we don't have a lot of changes with the verbiage. Uh, so this is an example of a piece of the framework. So you can see that instead of the slides with the indicators and the evidence there and, and the highlighting, there's the indicators on this side, there's living collaboration. So this is an example that me and one of the teachers uh, put into this framework where I would go in and leave feedback and that teacher would go then and reflect. So it would be an ongoing script of both the feedback and the reflection that that teacher has. And then you can see here, in a meeting that I might have with that teacher, we would talk about the evidence there. They would identify a focus from the indicators, and then they would say, here's my action steps in the next three weeks or four weeks to make progress on this. So instead of once every now and again talking about it, it's an ongoing process. So that's the big change that happened in the CEP. Uh, the other frameworks you won't see a lot of changes in because it took a lot of um, effort and energy on the committee's behalf to to change this, so. So more of a living document versus a here's one time yes. and then I set it back over here in the file over somewhere. Yes, because right now PGS feels like here we're going to do this and then two months later we're going to do this and two months later we're going to do that. It doesn't feel like that anymore. It's it's ongoing. At our next meeting, I'll just ask for your approval um, of the CEP. We will send it in to the state at that time. Of course, they will have an opportunity to make any revisions to make sure that it meets the state regulations. Of course, if they give us any feedback, we have to make those yeah, changes. We bring it back before the 50-50 committee. Then we come back to you, of course, mm -hmm. at the June meeting. Yeah. One thing I've tried to make sure to do is I've been collaborating with Todd Davis at uh, KDE because in lieu of Mr. Moore stepping down, I wanted to ensure that we are still following all the rules because there's a lot of freedom with the rules. And so with that, you want to make sure that you're following the steps. So he's taking a look at everything, and he says it looks good. It should be good to go. We're saying we don't want to have to have a tennis match with KD. Right, he yes. He back to us, and then we make some changes and hit it back, and so on. Right, so yeah. we should be good. Last time I heard from him, he said we were good to go on that. Thank you, Ms. Newton. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Williams. Appreciate it. Uh, moving on then to item number six, student and shareholder engagement, 6A, Central Office Reorganization, Superintendent Bradley. First, I want to say, um, first, the first five days is the first 10-day plan. The first five days, uh, people have been very generous, and um, not only with their time, but their care, and um, it's been a nice transition. I've been able to, to spend some the first 30 minutes of the day with my uh, Karen Connect class and transition, it's been a very nice transition this past week. Uh, we, this document, the first 10 days, uh, these are some, some outcomes from the first 10 days, and I think for the next, really, 90 days, I want to continue to share with you, sorry, let's see, yeah. I want to continue to share with you progress on those 30, 60, 90 day plans. <clears throat> uh, one of the things uh, that I was able to do was really sit down and look one-on-one -on -one with all um, central office staff and today in small groups uh, to continue conversations about the priorities for the district as laid out in the blueprint document that uh, I shared with you in the interview process and continue to discuss. Um, one of the key pieces, if you look down at shared leadership, uh, looking closely at job descriptions and current systems reality uh, in our system around human resources, also making sure that I maintain transparency about those goals and really looking closely at the plans and human resource alignment to those goals. So over the past uh, two days, I've, I've started talking more targetedly about a reorganization process here at the central office. And I wanna walk through that. So the, uh, if you look back at the wall um, with Tim and Tom, you've got the two kids there working on the um, working on world readiness you look at our district mission statement this is this is that same statement just on this piece of paper and a little more colorful um, but as we look at that statement this is really the purpose around how we think and how this is framing allocation of resources so ways that we're inspiring enabling preparing students to be successful in our society and as I've laid out these values 
and priorities over the last few months in my planning. Um, they really called us to think about how we are aligning resources within our organization. And um, additionally, I think it really forces us to think about the conversations we're having around the purpose uh, that our roles play. Um, and as we look at student outcomes, if you take a look at page four, which if you, if you didn't get to see the hedgehog, as I shared over the, as I shared la late last week, so the hedgehog really represents maintaining a strong focus. And if you take a look at the student outcomes on page four, it talks about these three key pieces that are part of the student leadership profile, as well as um, a part of the priority group that we've talked about with Nelson County Pride, inspired student leadership and learning. So community health and engagement is, a, is something that we as a district over the last year have had a lot of conversations around the, in the conversation around school safety. Um, as you'll see in here, my recommendation for a director of community health and engagement really focuses on putting resources under a common umbrella, and that umbrella unites resources under a coherent model for taking care of students. It also unites resources more intelligently around the way we share information about those students. Uh, in the same sense, the conversations I've had over the past six months, and with you as a board, we've talked deeply about workforce development. And we think about the relationship between schools and our community and the reality and the demands of the workforce are a, are a huge priority. And as we think about the need to continue to expand our workforce opportunities, this role would be a very significant priority in making sure that occurs. Lastly, as we think about inspired student leadership and learning, um, something that we know, uh, the world, we just had the conversation about Chromebooks, that's a part of this conversation, but it's really bigger than that in that we think about the purpose of school. And we're having a conversation around experiences in our classrooms from P12 that allow us to think, how is it that we're allowing students to live a life that's gonna inspire and enable them to be successful when they leave us? So these are essentially the three priorities of this reorganization, in addition to operations, uh, which is currently in place. If you take a look at page five, you'll see these roles. So in the blueprint document that I've shared with you all uh, throughout the process and as we look at um, uh, the backpack conversation that we've been having, the correlation between these goals and these roles are very unified. So when we talk about inspired students that are socially, emotionally engaged, that directly feeds into this team and this pattern around community health and engagement. We look at community partnership, mentorship for students and schools and work experiences and skills. The workforce development role is directly connected. As we look at early college and career and really creating a space for students to be inspired to learn and own their future, that's the director of student leadership and learning. Throughout the process, as you, as you guys know, I've continued to push the envelope around the way we think about our role. And um, as we think about this process, and you look at student outcomes in the pyramid, the student leadership profile, these roles direct connectly to student outcomes. The, as I've said as well, the intentions in this visioning document are not modest. And with that, they, they require a great deal of resource. One of the key pieces, if you take a look at page seven, is this conversation around the way we build structures to transform learning and build capacity. And key to that is the way we set up and organize our human resources. And really creating a space where people are connected around themes and their connectivity allows them to share information and intelligence more efficiently. Um, and create more open and transparent decision making for kids is the goal of this process. So page eight has uh, an example alignment structure for community health, workforce development, student leadership and learning and operations. You'll see the operations team is really a number of different teams, whereas the community health team is really would be a new team that was formed under the leadership of a director of community health and engagement. In the same sense, the workforce development team would be newly formed. 
under the direction of the Director of Workforce Development. And the Student Leadership and Learning Team would be, in the same sense, really cl closely collaborating with principals, instructional coaches, digital learning coach, um, Director of Special Education, to ensure that we have a common vision for student leadership and learning. Notice also, uh, one of the conversations I've had throughout the past six months is really around athletics. Where does that fit into the, to this conversation? And um, this reality that athletic leadership is a form of student leadership, and we have to be able to integrate that type of involvement and engagement into our thinking around leadership and learning. Uh, that is changing the conversation around what it means to go to school, what that means to be engaged in school. You'll find on the next few pages, I won't go through them piece by piece. You might find it rough just yeah. admit that, or if you'd rather go on page no, I'm, I'm just going to say, yeah, I'll just say the next few pages are just an overview of those roles, the purpose behind them, okay. and reinforcing what I've said. Yeah, I didn't mean, I didn't mean yeah, that. No, I mean, because you, you all wrote, because I'll, I'll be very honest <laughs> with Ms. Bradley. So, some of reading through some of the, um, the vision document. It is a very different way of thinking, and it's one of those where I've had to read, you know, several times and let it sink in a little bit. I, I it, it, maybe it's just a 25 watt light bulb right now, but I had a light bulb finally go on in my head whenever I saw page eight here, um, because to me this starts to help make sense in my head, um, because I'm starting to see how things, the, the more traditional names that we're used to hearing in, in, in our district or in any district are now starting to transform into these other um, uh, focus areas. And, you know, being able to look and see, you know, so what does the community health team, what does the director of community health and engagement mean? Okay, so we're talking about people personnel. We're, we're talking about federal and state programs, and I'm starting to see these pieces of the puzzle kind of fit into two areas of, of expertise or uh, focus, you know, whatever would be the right phrase. Um, one, one thing, though, and this is where my question was coming from, I started looking up here at this table, mm -hmm. you know, this collaborative table, yeah. and I, I see us as a six, the six-member team here. I yeah. see the, these four focus areas. I see our principals here as well. Yeah. I, I also see this NC mm -hmm. Pride and Communications yeah. team. So I, I'm mm -hmm. trying to see where each of these yeah. four fit in up here. Mm -hmm. That there, that is, yeah. that's something a little bit different, a I little think, bit separate, or yeah. I think the, I think that probably, and uh, as you ask that question, should probably be the foundation. So the NC Pride and Communications team is really um, will be the superintendent. Also, if I look at uh, the role of uh, Carla and the uh, uh, as the superintendent secretary, she'd be a big part of that conversation. And really, we want to blur the lines around how we celebrate each other. Um, just today, I was sharing my cell phone number with every central office employee that I met with to say, we need to be sharing good news. We need to be sending pictures. You need to share things with me so we can share that with the district. We can share it on the Facebook page. Um, we need that information to move, and we need it to move organically, and we need it to move efficiently. Um, so I really feel like, in a sense, everyone is a part of that. And if you look at um, the position, the final, the, the last page, it talks about community and school media coordinator. Mm. This is a this is a position that really focuses on creating a storyline and a brand and videography that focuses on um, really connecting through social media and being very creative around the stories we're telling in our schools and the stories we're telling as a district. This is a this role is really at the foundation and connects to all things. Uh, we as district employees all feed that position in a sense and we feed each other those those conversations but um, that, jo that job description is here and this is something that is drafted and will continue to be shared and and worked on uh, fine-tuned over the next week and so my um, my goal really due to the timing of this process in order to ensure that we're able to start with July 1 as approval of these positions and job descriptions at next week's May 15th uh, board meeting. So then what you're talking about is these um, is it four? Oh, five. Four positions. Yeah, four mm -hmm. positions, okay. 
which line up then with these on page eight. Yes. Uh -huh. And and also so what I'm what I maybe here's a different way that I, I can say this. This is good. I've been looking for the cliff notes mm -hmm. to some degree, and and I'm starting to see that here. I don't know about anybody else, but. You know, this, this has been very almost overpowering to me. I feel like, okay, what am I missing here? Not that there's anything no. missing, it's myself. But now as I look at this, I, some of it starts to come into more of a focus for me uh, of what it is that you've been trying to share. It's that mathematical. It is. It is. It's analytical. Yeah. yeah it really is. Yeah. Because it sort of reads simple to it, me. It, 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 it does, yeah. Uh, and as I start to look at this, it does start to make sense. Because, I, I mean, I see your passion, um, which has been that workforce piece. I mean, I think that's one of the pieces that, is, that you bring best to this board. And I'm, I'm now starting to see that, that workforce development team. And I'm, I'm reading down through here, and I'm imagining if I was sitting in, in your seat going, oh, my gosh, yes. Oh, yes, that's what I've been talking about. Oh, and look at this piece here, too. The pieces of that puzzle starting to fit together. Well, there's, it's just so important. I mean, it is huge um, to have this and to have that as a leadership role. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. Awesome. yeah. I knew you would like that mm -hmm. one. Yeah. So, then, would our, is this safe to say, then, that our takeaway on this needs to be that we need to continue to process this sum over this next week? Absolutely. And these job descriptions that uh, page 9 gives more of a visual representation mm -hmm. of the job description on yeah. page 10. Right. So, the facing pages go together. Right. Visual representation. The, the description itself right. that we need to spend time as uh, board members looking at this and if we have questions mm -hmm. or if there's a maybe a sentence or something that we might suggest tweaks mm -hmm. on that we need to be getting that back to you yes. between now and next Tuesday. Yes and I will say uh, I've collaborated with other districts that are doing some innovative work uh, to look at some of their job descriptions and um, uh, I feel confident that the expectations for these roles if and the responsibilities, if played out, allow us an opportunity to meet some of the goals laid out here, and if otherwise impossible to do. Okay. You, you had a look on your face. No, I, was, I thought you had a question. No, I, I think I understand the specific uh, request to, to digest over the okay. next week, and I'll do so. Okay. Are there other questions on this particular item? Or are you like me, some of it you're looking at going, I need to take another breath and find me some quiet time somewhere. Okay. Anything right. else that you need to share with us on that part? No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, then going on into item 6B, which are guest comments. Um, I don't know if we've got any guests, and I don't even have the little statement thing to read out there, but I think we all kind of know it. Okay, and I don't think we have any need for an executive session tonight. So, um, with that, then I think. Yes. Yeah, with that, then I think we would need a motion to adjourn this uh, work session. I'll make a motion. Motion by Ms. Breeding. Second. Second by Mr. Dickerson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you all for your all's time tonight. No, you there you go. Yeah. 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 Whereas this one, each individual is.